Welcome to Real Time Florida Sportsman. This week we're in Tampa Bay fishing for redfish. It's time to find the shortest route to the hottest bite. We scan Florida Sportsman's regional forums for the best fishing reports, then travel to make real anglers our local guides. Give me some of that! Together we let you in on secret spots and hometown moves. That's what I'm talking about! Oh yeah, <laughs> she's done for now. This week we're visiting the west central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum. We're fishing with Jay Bibbler, who's on a hot redfish bite. Oh, I watched him eat it. Nice. That was beautiful. First, we head to the flats looking for redfish. Then we switch things up and head to the structure for snook. All coming up on Real Time Florida Sportsman. First thing in the morning, we rolled into town. We met up with Josh and launched the Triton. Pulling away from the bow ramp, we're greeted to a beautiful morning. You know, the skies are nice and clear. We're on a high pressure system, prefrontal. You know, the front is coming in the next day. Another thing that's kind of going against us is there's a full moon. You know, Josh has been on a hot bite of red, school of hundreds of redfish, but I know that we're in for it. We're gonna have a tough bite. Full moon at night means the fish have a tendency to feed heavy at night, and it makes a daytime bite a little bit tougher. First order of business was to go get some bait. You know, these guys are not only using these baits to catch fish, but they chum heavily to fire these schools of fish up. You're looking for white bait? Yeah. Just, uh, Pilchard, scaled sardines. Greenbacks. Greenbacks. Call them, but Everybody calls them something different. Yeah, they're all white bait. After a little moving around, we found the bait that we needed, a couple throws of the net, and Josh had the live wells full. What is this place? This is uh, Anna Maria City Pier. Um, holding some bait. Yeah, holds bait, holds some big snook. All sorts of creatures underneath there. So we launched in Bradenton at Holmes Beach, and we're pretty much smack dab between two giant estuaries. We've got Tampa Bay to the north and Sarasota Bay to the south. You know, these are great inshore fisheries. You got snook, trout, reds, you know, vast flats, tons of bait, a great destination. We love coming here. All right, we have a beautiful morning. Josh Bibbler, Jay Bibbler in the west central section of Florida Sports Reform. You got us out here. We went and got some bait. First thing, what do you got planned for us? Well, we're um, just uh, just on the outside of the Palmasola Bay here. Um, and we got a good uh, good pile of redfish up here. There's um, They've been hanging out for a couple weeks. We kind of found them. We were scouting, doing some uh, tournament fishing. And um, they've just been hanging out and pretty much eating anything that gets gets in their way. So I saw your pictures, man. These things are are piled up in these potholes. Yeah. You said the tide's a little low right now. We may not be able to get in there quite yet. Yeah, they're they're not leaving. Uh, basically, what it is, there's some some massive potholes up here that are real deep. And um, when it gets low, they just you know sit down in those holes and, and kind of wait out the tide, wait for it to come back in. Um, and then when it gets up, you know they'll they'll get out and move around. So like I said, Josh has been on this great school of reds on this flat, you know, but with this full moon, we're greeted to extreme tides. This moon can push a lot of water in and out. First thing in the morning, we have a really low tide. He's been fishing these potholes that can be eight feet deep, but to get to these potholes, you know, these grass flats can be about a foot deep. We got to get the boat in there. These potholes are going to be sandy areas. Are they going to be dark? Yeah, they're just sand. Um, so just look for the clear areas. Right. Now, they're fairly deep in this water. I mean, okay. it's, the water's not too dirty, but it's not crystal clear either, so. Um, it may look a little darker. Yeah, it'll just look kind of like a, a different shade of, of tea. So you've been on the school of fish for a while. This They don't go that far. I mean, you, you got them on a flat yesterday. They're pretty guaranteed that they're going to be on the same flat the next day. Well, it's never guaranteed because it's they move. But, they got fins and they swim. But, um, you know, these fish have been here for going on a month now. Okay. And they kind of have a pattern, you know, depending on the tide. They'll, you know, move around, they'll move from potholes out to the flat, back, you know, back and forth. And um, I think the main thing is they're getting fed here. So until, until they run out of food, they're yeah. gonna stay here and just and just keep, keep grubbing. So once we got into the spot, we started working these potholes, looking for these fish. You know, Josh had been on these fish for quite a while. You know, but they just weren't showing themselves. We made our way all the way down this flat, almost to the end of it. I'm starting to get a little nervous that they're not, these fish aren't even here. But at the very end, the fish popped up. There's a school right there, man. Look at that. They're cruising right at us. Looking happy. Oh, you're in them. 
So finding the school of fish is only half of it. With this bright full moon, clear skies at night, these fish can feed heavily, heavily at night and not so much during the day. Typically on these full moons, you get a good bite first thing in the morning, late in the evening. You know, I know we're gonna be in for it today. Did they just, they went back to the right, didn't they? Yeah, look at the school yep. to the right. Yep, yep. I see red, all I see is red. This segment is brought to you by Gulp Saltwater. Outfishes all other beats. Not bad for a day's work. I'm gonna need a few more of these for tomorrow. Catch more fish with Gulp and Gulp Alive. Gulp outfishes anything and everything, including live bait. Gulp looks, feels, and tastes alive. I'll clear off some more wall space. <laughs> So this is the giant grass flat, you know, you know, turtle grass everywhere, you know, pot marked with these areas of just a sandy hole, almost like a swimming pool. You know, and talking to Josh, he has been finding these fish just laid up in these holes, but this isn't the case this morning. These fish are running around from spot to spot, you know, and he's just been targeting when they've been sitting in the holes. You know, what we decided to do was let these fish settle down, find a hole that they wanted to be in, and then try to target them. Look at where they came back to though. Back to their happy place. Oh, look, I'm right here. Is that them right there? Right here. So these fish were finally in somewhat of a happy state. You know, they kind of calmed down. They got, you know, congregated into one area. And it's a weekend now, so we're fishing with other boats. We power pulled down into one area, and actually we kind of corralled these fish up. You know, and if you take your time, and you know, there was two other boats there, but everybody kind of posted up, and we kind of had these fish kind of, you know, in essence, pinned in. They would move from our boat over to another boat, over to the other boat, and they were kind of like locked in one area that we could, you know, every couple minutes you could fire in on the school. We had been fishing this school for a while now, and I don't know if they just calmed down, if we were able to position our baits a little bit better, but finally these fish decided to eat. Oh, I got one finally. We've been working the same school of fish all morning. Oh. I mean, look at these fish right here coming across our bow. Hundreds of redfish. All morning we've been on these fish on the same exact flat. We did not move. Kept contemplating moving. We knew the fish were here. They finally made their way over here to one of these holes that we could get to them. And I finally got one. Ah, oh, that's what I've been looking for. What a fish. Oh. Is this the typical size that you've been catching right here? Yeah, man, that's, uh, that one looks like he's overslot for sure. It's nice and fat, he's the right breed though. Especially, <laughs> like, that's, that's what we're looking for when we're pre-fishing over these tournaments, big fat head and shoulders on them. Well, there's a school of about probably a couple hundred more of them in there. Yeah, tell you what, they're making us work for it though. This is an incredible sight to see, and I've seen reports of it, and I've seen pictures, you know, and I've seen videos of it, but this is my first experience having a couple hundred redfish around the boat, you know, actually change the color of the water with so many fish. It is an incredible sight. Nice. Oh, yeah. Turn it on. Afternoon bite. Why get out here at seven in the morning? I don't know why we got up so early. I could have slept a couple more hours. All right. You got him on that Yozuri. Oh yeah. This one here is our tournament fish. This, he looks, looks like he's right there. I bet he's uh, 26. Oh man. Right there in the corner of the mouth. What a nice fish. Look at these schools right here. Between us and that other boat, we got them pinned in between us. All you see is a hue of red in the water. And that's more the size that you're looking for the, for the tournaments. Oh, that one, that one right there is perfect. No, he's, I bet, I bet that one's right at the top of the slot. Oh. And, uh, and nice and fat. Pretty. Beautiful. Let that one go. Good job, brother. Let's do it again. This segment brought to you by Mercury Marine celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. 
Mercury Verado, outstanding corrosion protection, proven reliability. Yeah. And it comes with all this. Meet Tom from customer support. Whoa, he's a hugger. Huh? Not really into that, Tom. Thank you. This is Nick from field testing, runs these babies thousands of hours. They're solid. Nick? This is Cheryl and Bobby, our prop engineer. He turns horsepower into performance. Oh, and the rest of the gang's here. It's good to have Mercury behind you. Meet the rest of the team at mercurymarine.com. Tom, the hugger. So I've never experienced this before. A couple hundred redfish around the boat. You know, I'm firing in you know, jerk shads, you know, topwater plugs, live bait. I'm throwing everything at these fish. Are these fish here year round? I mean, you're targeting this same type of schools on these flats it's all year round? Pretty much that's, that's how we're fishing them in the fall time. Now, redfish in this area, they're here all year long. Um, we With catch, singles we, and stuff on the flats? Yep, we catch them all year long. Um, you know, the rest of the year, they're, they're kind of spread out. Like they'll, you know, they'll be in small groups, but not, you know, not hundreds of fish. Massive Normally schools. it's um, like, oh no. Oh, we came off. Normally it's like a couple of dozen, you know, fish here and there, or, or maybe there might be 50, 60 fr fish spread out over a flat, um, but d definitely not tight groups like this. So how long have you been fishing this area for? Um, I was born and raised right here, Bradenton, Florida. Oh, no, uh, really? Whew. So I actually, uh, growing up, my family was real big and like more in the freshwater stuff. My, okay. uh, my grandparents owned a bunch of property down in uh, the Everglades, actually what is now part of the uh, national park. And so we were real big on doing that. Um, all freshwater stuff. I didn't even saltwater fish until I was about 15 or 16 years old. And then I just got addicted like right away <laughs> and uh, saved up my lawn mowing money. Got my first boat when I was 17. Oh, really? And, um, and it's been all downhill since there. You know, <laughs> like... Oh, I watched him eat it. Nice. That was beautiful. Good beautiful. Day. Right in that school. Oh, okay. He hooked up to the same exact time. Okay, that was beautiful. I watched him come right up and grab it. Just grab that gulp right there. Pretty is that. That school was actually swimming this way. Yeah, they were And uh, I was up. reeling across the top of them. I was about a good eight or ten inches up over the top of the fish, and this one was swimming that way, and he just turned and came up and just grabbed it right off the surface. Oh. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, definitely. That's one we'd be looking for right there. Tournament fish. Be free. Superstar, be free. <laughs> I got one. I'm hooked to you. I dropped that little, uh, little baby greenie in there on a trail car circle hook and just let it sit. Do it right before the school, the school got to it. Didn't last long. It's funny, we were here all morning, not getting bit. Afternoon, high sun, just must have wanted this higher water. Yeah, I know uh, there was plenty of room. I mean, plenty of water in here for them. It's not like there wasn't enough water for them to hang out, but um, I guess they, you know, they're just trained. They know when the high water, when that tide's coming in and the water gets up real high, the bait shows up and you can watch the bait just come in off the flat and work its way right, you know, right in here. So, oh yeah, that's another good tournament fish here. Oh, that is a beautiful tournament fish. Woo! I'm bringing it right to you. you, you. Oh. Look at these pieces of his skin. His scales actually coming all the way down through his tail. It's pretty cool. So we caught a handful of really nice redfish. Now these are top slot, over slot fish. You know, so we decided to call it a little early, head in, get cleaned up, and make plans for dinner. All right, you showed us the fishing. Can you show us the nightlife? You know, we found a couple uh, good fish. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we can find a, a couple good bars too and uh, go listen to some country music maybe. All right, sounds good. So Josh took us to a fish house in downtown Sarasota. We had some drinks and enjoyed the local entertainment.
This segment brought to you by Mojo Sportswear. Get your mojo on. Mojo, the next generation in sport fishing apparel. Fishing isn't just a sport, it's a lifestyle. Mojo Sportwear has created a line of high performance fishing apparel that's constructed from the most technologically advanced fabrics on the market. It's the next generation of sport fishing gear and it's available today. Get protection from the sun while staying dry, even on the hottest days. It's time to get your mojo on. Heading over to the west central section of the Florida Sportsman Forum to fish these redfish, you know, I knew I was going to have several rods ready to go. I like to have two or three rods prepared, you know, rigged up morning before I get out on the fish. The time to rig is not when you're on the fish. There's so much going on, and if you have a variety of baits available to throw to the fish, the more successful you're going to be. You know, I think it's always a good idea to have a soft bait. This is a five inch sculpt jerk shad anywhere in the regions of Florida. You know, the fish are going to eat this. I'll fish it typically on a 3 8 ounce, uh, you know, a quarter ounce to an eighth ounce jig head. I'll have this ready to fire into a school of fish. In addition to that, we like to have a hard bait, especially in the morning, a top water bait. You know, this Yozuri top water is a great bait. If you see some surface action, pick it up. I can fire it right into the middle of the school and try to get a, bit, you know, a bite on a hard bait. And again, if we're going to get live bait, have a rod red, ready and rigged. This one's basic, 15 pound setup on this pen, you know, just 30 pound Berkeley fluorocarbon and a trocar circle hook. Something real easy, I can grab a white bait, pick a white bait up, and I'll actually, you know, put a white bait on here, have them dangling over the side, and I'll have these three rods ready to fire at a school of fish. Sometimes, you know, they don't want the soft bait, they want a live bait, I'm gonna mix it up. Sometimes I don't even give the, you know, give it time to reel the whole bait in. I'll drop a rod, pick up another rod, and fire it in. And sometimes that's the key to get the bite. So like I had mentioned, you know, we had this prefrontal the day before, and now that front is upon us. You know, conditions are cloudy, we got some rain, you know, but we're still contending with two or three days off the full moon. So this front line of storm clouds made for a pretty dramatic morning. You know, after launching the boat, our first order of business again, though, was to go get some bait. Heading out, you know, I had storm clouds and a rainbow on one side and a beautiful sunrise on the other. So we ended up heading over to the Skyway Bridge to get bait. You know, we're even dodging rainstorms, you know, in and out of rain. You know, finally we filled the well, and after filling the well, it actually looked like conditions were clearing. We might actually have a good day. So now we're more up in the heart of Tampa Bay, and Josh has plans for us to, you know, to target these high structure areas and specifically just look for snook today. So we're bouncing around a lot looking for these snook. You know, we're trying everything. You know, we're drifting these grass flats, throwing topwater plugs, you know, hit some potholes, some oyster beds with live bait, you know, try to throw some jigs and some live bait at some heavy structure, some debris. Uh, but these fish just aren't biting. So we decided to switch things up a little bit and we're going to fish some docks. Josh is going to take us over to some of his favorite docks at the mouth of the Manti River. And listen, this is what I do. This is what I know. This is my type of fishing. You know, I'm at home here. We snook fishing now. Yeah, this is a little hand-to-hand -hand combat deal here. You know, as soon as we get in there, you know, I know these fish are here. Heavy structure, we got some current, we got some bait, you know. This is where the fish love to live. I'm confident that I can get the bite in here. You know, we bounced around from boat to boat, but finally, I got a snook to eat. I don't like some close quarter. Snook style. <laughs> <laughs> I had to flip that thing so far back in there. A little tiny snook. I knew there had to be a snook in there. God, it's just too pretty for there not to be one sitting in there. Like you said, this guy is not that big. But back in there. Oh. <laughs> You thump that bait down. God. Love the structure. Yeah. A little dark fish. And this tannic water. Reminds me of the East Coast. It's dark water. They love it. Love to sit under structure. Love to sit under boats. Anytime you get a situation where those boats are sitting there a while, 
just a great spot to stoke fish. You know, we fished this area some more. We found some other fish under a dock, you know, and I pitched them probably a dozen, 15 times, but I think they were keen in on smaller baits. I just couldn't get them to eat my pilchards or my greenies. So we decided to move, head back towards the ramp, and try one other spot. So Josh took us over to this bridge, and this is something that I'm really familiar with. This is the type of fishing that I do as well. You know, he had caught a lot of big snook here in the past. We get the boat positioned just perfectly. We float the white baits back. I know it won't take long. We just thought, you know, going back to the ramp, we'll stop by the bridge here in the Mansi River. This current's, you know, just moving through here real good. And Again, heavy structure. But these pileys actually break this current up. Snook don't like to sit in a super heavy current and do a lot of work. The little males will, but the females don't. So this actually breaks the current up, breaks the tide up. These fenders are always a good place to fish for snook. Any coast, east coast, west coast. Oh, he uh, just, he oh, just, he just ate it. it. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled him right up between the pilings. That was cool. Say, Snook don't like structure. Man, that thing ate. Hello, guys. We're just looking for one about twice that size, three times that size. That's all right. I'll take them. So with that approaching front, conditions are even you know, worsening. Winds are picking up. I think we got the most out of this bite today. We decided to call it quits. So Josh Bibler from the West Central section of Florida Sportsman Forum had been on a great bite. I knew I had to get over this Tampa Bay area again and witness it for myself. The school of redfish was absolutely incredible. I had a great time. It was because his post that I chose him to fish with. Keep your reports coming, and I may fish with you next on Real Time, Florida Sportsman. I think I hit one on the head. Yeah, you're in them. I'm in them. We're all in them. Everybody's in them. Here they come. They're coming in hot. They're coming in hot. I almost just hit that one in the back. Oh, they're so beautiful. Like a unicorn. I mean, I only got like two hours of sleep. Well, you know that. Where were you last night? It's up at the uh, uh -huh. Miranda Lambert concert. Oh, and, uh, that's real manly. <laughs> my old lady won us. Uh, oh, blame it on the old lady did. now. She won us we tickets. We know it's your favorite. It's on your hot list. <laughs> Actually, I do like her. She's, yeah. she's sassy. Oh, my bad. You mean we can't use <laughs> <laughs> It's actually just two people's names put together. 